We'll get it lit. Hang on, Tiger. Let's rewind that up. Is that even legal, what he is doing? G'day guys, Jason and Nick here from the Outer Farm. We're actually on the Outer Farm property this afternoon. What I want to discuss is do you need a permit to light a fire? So here in Queensland, Australia, the Queensland Fire and Emergency Services Act make it illegal to have a fire or burn without first a permit to light a fire which has been issued by a fire warden. And if it have found doing so, it can attract penalties such as on the spot fines and even prosecution. There are several exceptions to the rule. Provided adequate precautions are taken to prevent the spread of the fire and the lighting of the fire conforms with any local laws defined by your local government within your area or provisions of an Environment or Protection Act, the following fires may be lit without a permit to light a fire being issued by the fire warden. So the first is for a fire with neither the height, width or length of material being consumed exceeds two meters or six foot. The second lit fire is for the purpose of burning the carcass or the remains of a beast. The third is a fire lit for the purpose of burning sawdust or for residue left over from the operations of running a sawmill. And the fourth is for a fire lit outdoors for the purpose of cooking. If enclosed in a fireplace constructed in a manner to prevent the escape of the fire or any burning material therefrom. Though the fifth and final reason would be a cane fire, it also may be subject to notification, but it may also be lit under certain conditions. Though you would need to check with the cane fire burning notification PDF first to find out if you're eligible. So you've determined you don't need a fire permit. So what do you do next before you can actually light the fire? You've got one of two choices. You can either ring the fire warden to find out if there's any fire bans within the area, or if you're in the case of you're in Queensland where I am, you can just go on to the website, Queensland Fire and Emergency Services website, and you can click on prepare. You can hit fire, and that'll bring you to this page lighting fires in Queensland. So then the first line, it says the first step is to check and it's got underlined current fire band page. So you just click on that and then that opens this page which says fire bands and restrictions. Just scroll down. So that's Australia. I'll zoom in a bit more. So if I go to here, my zone is up here in the wide bay Fraser Coast region. So I can see there's no fire bands in my zone because if I scroll down, fire bands are in red and no fire bands are in just the plain white color. So there's a lot of fire bands in this area. So the where you find that is on your left here. So there's the region. There's one, two, there's arrow down, three, four. There's four areas with fire bands and that's up until has an active fire ban up until the 28th of February, 2023, midnight. If you've checked that, you're right to go. Will I be needing a fire permit for this one? Absolutely, as you can see, it's definitely a lot longer and it is wider than two meters or six foot. It may not be as high as that two meters or six foot, but the length and the width knock it out, meaning I need a permit. So looks like it's off to a visit to the uh, fire warden for me. But don't always rock up to your fire warden thinking you're gonna get a permit because it's at his discretion. If he doesn't think, if he has some safety issues or concerns, you may need to address them before he writes out the permit. It may be the case of, have you water? Have you slashed around the vicinity where you're gonna light the fire? So it's up to his discretion whether you get a permit or not. So I'll head down and get me fire permit and I'll be back before you can click your fingers. Voila, I told you it'd be that quick. So you notice on here it's got permit to light a fire. Every permit will have a de designated, dedicated permit number and that's specific to my permit. It's got the fire warden's name and the area that he's in charge of. It's got my name, my property details plan on the map and 
and lot number and it's got my contact details and also on the permit it says what the permit's for and in my case it's hazard mitigation or debris removal which is this timber here which I've got cleared up in property I wish to burn to get rid of it and also it's got what it needs to have so mine it's got sufficient fire break and he's got underlying slashed and three meter meters width which is six foot around the fire which you can clearly see I've done also it's got on here the number of people capable and equipment to fight the fire so in this instance he's asked for two people which is myself and Nicole and the equipment he says it's a fire trailer with a 400 litre tank and a fire pump which the rural fire brigade kindly lent to us so thanks guys um, and on here it's got if the fire is likely to ingress or havoc to a road or neighbours you need to put up at least two signs 200 metres in either direction along the road which that gives warning to oncoming motorists that potential smoke hazards and also contact your neighbours before you light a fire not to be lit before 4pm so that allows it to cool that little bit and also do not exceed 20 knots and it says underline forecast by Bureau of Meteorology bomb that the strength or direction of the winds in this case it's just got the strength exceed does not exceed 20 kilometers an hour so myself and Nicole don't light anything under I'm oh, sorry don't light anything over 13 kilometers an hour we're a bit hesitant like we see wind and we're scared of the embers because we're in the rural area going across the road or down the neighbors block so we don't generally light even though it's 20 kilometers an hour we don't light anything that's over 13 kilometers an hour but that's personal choice but probably the most important thing on the permit is before you actually light your fire you've got to call your intent to light and that's done through QFES in our case which is Queensland Fire Emergency Service and that will be registered with Firecom. Firecom are responsible for taking reports of fires for those that come from triple zero or it's similar to triple nine if you're over in the United States so what happens is if you don't call Firecom and register the fire they will end up dispatching a fire truck or Queensland Fire Emergency Services resources accordingly if the people in the vicinity smell smoke or see fire or see flames or are unsure so if you have registered they know there's a fire in that vicinity so they're not going to send unnecessary resources like fire trucks which could be going to emergency situations to come out to my property for unregistered permits or I forgot to make a phone call so you're really taking up resources valuable resources that don't really need to be here so if they're aware that you've got a fire and someone calls triple zero there's no reason for them to come out because they know there's a fire has been registered and it's in the area and at what time the fire has been started so so once the fire has been lit the person whose name is on the permit to light must remain at the fire and in supervision the whole time so they must walk them and patrol the boundaries or perimeters of that fire to make sure it's not getting away from you and they can't leave the fire at any time you can't walk away from the fire unless it's made safe and cooled down and safe to do so and it can't get out of control and run away on you so me and Nicole go around within a couple of hours when it's cooled down a bit and we push the coals and any unburnt timber into the fire so we've got a good meter or three foot I've already burnt surfaces that we've pushed in burnt ground so the fire actually can't run and get away and we're still there for about another hour or two after that and when it cools down there's no real naked flames we we're safe to do so we we leave the area so but if you're there and the fire gets out of control you're obligated under the act to actually stay there and fight so while you're fighting you obviously sending someone to ring triple zero or 911 was it what it is over in the US until they Queensland Fire and Emergency Services trucks and firefighters are there to help you put the fire out but if it's not safe to do so step back but still remain there until the fireys get there and then let them 
take control of the fire. So in regards to protection and liability, under the Act, if you comply with all conditions and directions contained within the permit, you will not incur any liability at common law for any loss, injury or damage caused by the fire unless it can be shown that you acted recklessly or maliciously. So on that note, guys, I think I'm going to call a night. So I hope I've clarified a few things there in regards to when you need a permit to light a fire and when you don't. So... Hope you have all good morning, a terrific afternoon, and an awesome evening, guys, wherever you watch this from, and we'll catch you later.